Um, yeah, thank you very much, Jonas Malotki, for joining us, Jonas von Malotki. And, uh, and yeah, we're here at the FOSS Asia Summit, uh, starting with the next session. Um, I would like to introduce Jonas quickly. Jonas holds a diploma in computer science and Japanese studies from University of Bonn. So with his connection between Europe and Asia, he's a perfect uh, speaker here at the FOSS Asia Summit. And Jonas' main focus topics were metadata and data quality, as well as neural networks at his uh, studies. Within Daimler, he held various leadership roles for central systems. He has a keen interest in new technologies and the open source movement. Currently, he's the CEO of Daimler Projects GmbH, a 100% subsidiary of Daimler with a focus on product data and VR slash AR technologies. For the Daimler Group, he was leading the blockchain activities from the technology perspective and was a member of the Hyperledger Governing Board. We had Brian here a few days ago, so that's a great connection again. And uh, furthermore, um, Jonas is currently shaping the open source strategy for Daimler. So a lot of information already in your bio, and we're looking forward <laughs> to getting really deep insights now. So thank you and welcome very much, Jonas von Malotki. Uh, thank you, Mario. Uh, thank you a lot. Um, uh, as I already joined uh, a little bit uh, by accident uh, the uh, the panel discussion, but it felt awfully familiar uh, because actually we were uh, at Daimler. We were um, with FOSS Asia in 2017, and I will show you a little bit around uh, what has been happening since then. Yeah? As Mario already. Um, Set. I'm currently uh, the CEO of the Daimler Protex uh, GmbH, which is a, a kind of um, special legal entity uh, in Germany. What we do as a 100% subsidiary is a lot of tech. Yeah? And I have something uh, here as well that I will try to share with you and try to invite you to be really uh, part of that. Yeah? And uh, in 2017, uh, we came to FOSS Asia and said, yeah, you know, we are doing open source and want to engage. And, you know, uh, what Daimler does is, is build cars and uh, trucks, uh, essentially. And uh, those, I mean, you cannot have those without any software nowadays. Yeah? And um, that's why also we, we became a member of the Linux Foundation and said, yeah, OK, uh, in January 2017, uh, we joined uh, the automotive grade Linux, we joined Hyperledger because we thought that uh, with, with blockchain there's something really, uh, really going on and we want to design the, the future uh, of software and the future of a data exchange there. And we're still a member of Hyperledger, um, yet, uh, you know, the, the hype cycle uh, took it a little bit that it was more difficult to, to stay uh, on track. Uh, still, we are doing a lot with that and we are uh, still on the Forbes 50 list with, with um, the whole blockchain, uh, Forbes 50 blockchain list. Yeah. And then we came in 2017 to um, FOSS Asia and saying, yeah, you know, we are going to um, uh, to do more in, in FOSS and um, we were we were thrilled really to to engage in those activities and and really wanted to to make a difference and really wanted to to dive into that and uh, we had a big uh, program set up uh, so to speak uh, where in this company we wanted to really make it happen that we have um, access to open source and also going to contribute to open source uh, my last slide there at this time was yeah, you know, big things are well engineered in foundation. And if you uh, if you think about uh, big companies, global enterprises like Daimler, uh, with a lot of uh, history as well, uh, then uh, it's always good to to look at that. That uh, good things will uh, take a while. So the question is, where are we now? Are we there yet? And why is this actually taking so long? And um, yeah. Um, maybe maybe a view of how you could see how the open source development is going on into big into big companies uh, just a glimpse of it into into the view uh, yeah first of all I mean the companies big companies are by default complex already yeah 
uh, we have a long history. We have uh, a lot of uh, processes there already, so we have to navigate through it. And actually, uh, it's not like the open source world uh, in itself is not very complex. Huh? Because if you think about how many different license types are there and how uh, different kinds of obligations are also put to that, um, that's not an easy task. Yeah? I think we have over 1,000 uh, licenses documented uh, uh, in our uh, license charts and um, and instructions, specific instruction how to deal with those licenses uh, and and what you have to oblige to. I mean, it's pretty obvious uh, if you have uh, any kind of um, permissive license, then you're usually a little bit more on the easy side. If you have uh, uh, um, and, and a copyleft license, then usually it's a little bit more complicated uh, to go through that and you have to really think about hard uh, in a legal sense yet also in an engineering sense how to really integrate it into a product or so yeah so this really also is one of the parts there it also adds to these to the things that you have to check and have to go through and then uh, of, co of course on on certain uh, areas of the of the world, um, the whole patent stuff is is really something. Yeah, since we are a global company, um, patents are always a, a, a thing of concern, and we have to see how do we actually deal with that. Yeah, and especially if you combine software and hardware in in a product, uh, usually also patents get to to a certain degree, uh, quite the essence of what you're doing. Yeah, So uh, combining that is already complexity and not so easy. Um, then you, you start thinking about, okay, what kind of tooling will you also have? So how do you can, how can you actually change and how can you actually uh, be sure that the right stuff you're doing and that you have a, a certain license compliance, for instance, and it, you you know that you fulfill the obligations and everything. So that is a, a common common problem. So you start to think about how can you can you actually do it? Yeah. Um, then further on, certainly from a company coming from uh, intellectual property rights and and protecting. Uh, a, 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 vehicle uh, and protecting also the intellectual property that comes with it there's a lot of thing you have to do in a company with regards to mindset yeah you really have to be uh, uh, to be an advocate for for what you stand for because the first reaction would always be uh, i mean it's good if you use open source that's super good because uh, there's no problem um uh, that's that's good we we get something yeah um, but then you try to talk to them, yeah, how would it be if we wanted to open, also open a source um, stuff from ourselves? Then usually it's like, why would I give away something? Yeah, And uh, we try to come up with, uh, with this idea, you yeah, share something to get, so ba get back so much more. And um, also this mindset of things is, why should I take something and give something back into the community? I mean, we just find those kinds of, uh, of um, prejudices uh, in, in the company. And the question is, why should I give something back? Yeah? And uh, we had Greg also over there and he was saying something which was really good. Everybody does open source in a selfish way and yet uh, it helps to really progress uh, the whole thing. And we try to really explain, and you have to explain uh, to management and to also engineers why it makes sense to not uh, do a fork and uh, uh, keep everything for yourself, but really do uh, a fork and give something upstream again. Yeah, but then, as you know, it's a big company, so you have laws and regulations, and then you have to try to find stuff like uh, stuff like uh, how do we deal actually with a certain uh, parts there yeah uh, I could give you an insight uh, for instance uh, how do you deal and there was also something with github going on and um, uh, and uh, sanction lists for instance and that is something uh, big companies always have to check for yeah so how do we make sure that we actually don't give any contribution into an area where it's not uh, allowed yeah and how can we can we make sure that the engineer does it in the right way and so on so 
that is something um, which which adds to the overall complexity. If it's only uh, a small local problem, that's usually not a not a big thing. But if it's uh, if, if it's in the world, it's not so easy to actually uh, make that sure. Yeah? And um, I think actually open source in a, in a way is a is a big uh, is a big enabler for that. Um, we also saw all those uh, kind of trade wars between uh, China and the U.S. and uh, a few. Uh, actually said that um, yeah, if we open source this and this, then we don't have a problem in that. So there was already a little bit of going of this ideas going on. Yeah, and then as you know, it's a big company, so uh, you have to build to scale. Yeah, um, as we said into in the beginning of our journey, it really was uh, was only a few people uh, starting, only three people out of the IT department, out of the uh, R and D, so research and development department, and out of legal, um, to really set this whole thing up. Yeah? But once once you open the door, uh, then you have um, up until fifty thousand people essentially, or, or could be doing uh, open source. So you really have to think about how do I do it um, that we have something that it actually scales. Yeah? And that was, um, to be honest, uh, a task we kind of underestimated um, to build everything this way um, uh, that everything works. Yeah? Um, I have one one uh, small anecdote there. Uh, I always said, you know, if if in a big company, uh, I don't know anything about tax regulations. I don't know anything about this and this. Yeah, and in a big company, you always have somebody. Of something you don't know, who made his PhD about that, yeah, and so uh, certainly you have to talk with a lot of people, and this was really like a, a, a round throughout the whole company to find out where do we have to to stick to which kind of laws, regulations, rules, and so on, and even make it possible to scale. Yeah, so what happened? Uh, we surely came up with uh, building blocks there. Uh, first of all, you need a little bit of view in a big organization. What is the organization of that kind of endeavor you're doing? Yeah, what are the roles in there? What is the uh, what uh, is the accountability of the role, and so on? Who decides on what? Where do you do something? Yeah, and even describing a role within an enterprise, for instance, uh, what has a maintainer to do? Yeah, if you open an, or if you if you publish an open source. Uh, whether it be uh, on your on your GitHub page or in an organization, you always have to think about yeah, you need a maintainer, uh, and this kind of roles they have to be described for a big enterprise, or else nobody knows what to do there. Huh? Uh, certainly, I mean, fortunately there are there are already good descriptions there, and you can just take them, but you have to internalize them for uh what kind of also capacity uh time is behind that and so on yeah then you certainly need processes yeah how do you actually do an open source publishing how do you actually do uh an an merge request and how do you actually uh, do something in a in a software uh you want to you want to influence or you want to really um do something in there because you need it and you need this kind of particular feature in that yeah um, then, as you uh, as already mentioned, you need the platforms and tooling, and also the platforms that um, um, uh, that help you and really do something. Yeah, and actually, the biggest surprise for us was uh, that we, with our open source endeavor, we also built up our inner source um, and and try to make people learn that sharing is a good thing and uh, that uh, there is a lot of benefit coming from that, and we build up. Uh, uh, an, an open source and source repository system, and we for the first year in 2019 uh, or in 2018, uh, uh, no, in 2019 actually, um, we thought that we will maybe reach 5,000 developers there, and actually we we reached uh, in in I think uh, not only uh, uh, eight months we reached uh, around uh, over 10,000. Yeah. So this was really was something that surprised us, and uh, also how many people were starting to really develop pla uh, stuff in inner source. Yet uh, we really uh, would also like them to open more up so that the inner source could happen. Because what actually happened is 
uh, that a lot of people put repositories there and held them in private. Yeah? And that's not uh, how inner source works. And so, but you can see that also tools like that, and we also had some tools for uh, license compliance, for instance, and um, actually, with all those projects on that, we immediately had uh, some problems in, in the way it scaled because it took just too long and we had to uh, double up on multiple instances so that people could do their work. Yeah? To bring all that together and to the people, because that is a learning endeavor, you need trainings. Yeah? And uh, we came up with the idea of uh, let's do something which is called the driver's license. Uh, and uh, people uh, have to have to finish a driver's license for contributions, for instance, or have to finish a driver's license for uh, for being a maintainer, uh, so that we actually know that all the rules that I elaborated uh, on earlier um, have been have been really um, upheld to, and they know how to navigate through this complex uh, complex world there. Um, yeah, essentially that's that's it. Uh, so, how successful uh, uh, did it did it become? Yeah, unfortunately, uh, we made it. Yeah, uh, our first open source release um, was a small library called Vehicle Information Service. Uh, you can see that here on our GitHub um, uh, GitHub page, uh, GitHub.com/daimler. Um, I mean, this was. I always said this is a small step for the developer, but a big step for this company. Um, because uh, we really had to, to try out everything there, you know, our, our whole processes and so on. We sat together in a room, uh, at that time it was still possible, and, and a thought of, yeah, do, did we do all the steps right? Yeah? And then we had um, uh, the guy, Marcel, over who's uh, publishing uh, this, and the whole, the whole FOSS team uh, doing the whole processes was sitting there and looking over his shoulder. Does it, does it really work? Yeah? Because it was the, the, the first test, the first pilot to really try it out. Yeah? Nowadays, I think we have uh, around 20 different, different um, uh, projects there. It's a little bit more in terms of repositories, uh, yet um, it's it's only a small, a small endeavor there. We have um, accumulated, I counted that uh, two weeks ago, uh, around 270 stars. So uh, uh, that's that's really uh, in the beginning still. Yeah, we are just entering that space. Uh, but I'm really happy that we made it and that we also built the processes to really uh, uh, to really have um, the open source releases there. And here's one thing I really wanted to share with you. Um, uh, I really wanted to share with you about um, um, what we are doing with uh, Daimler Protics. Um, uh, we, we have um, built um, a learning platform um, that uh, combines learning and knowledge acquisition, uh, not, not, not learning and really looking up knowledge you already have. And certainly it's it's something um, uh, that we wanted to be intuitive and have a little bit of gamification in there. And because we usually also in, in my company, so Dana Protics, we, we help other departments to learn um, new stuff, uh, may it be with uh, augmented reality or, uh, or plain, yeah. Uh, how do you do this kind of system? How do you do that? Yeah? And as I became the CEO, I really asked, can we, that, that's, that's a good thing. Can we actually open source that? Because uh, our business model is not uh, using that kind of license fees there. And we said, yeah, why not? We can actually open source that. And uh, after a few weeks, we came up with a plan and we said, yeah, that's a good thing. Let's uh, put it uh, put it onto uh, to GitHub. It's you can find it there. Uh, it's built on, uh, as always, uh, on open source um, components, and this time uh, WordPress. And we put uh, a lot of um, materials and stuff around there. You have to have for learning management systems. So how can you um, build also academy stuff? How can you be? Uh, how can you build a course, for instance? And uh, if you build that as a course, you also have the possibility to later on have a, a person who's like, yeah, I learned that one time, where can I find it again? Yeah, And that was something I think, uh, which is different in, in a term um, that most learning systems, you have this course and just run through it. And then after that, uh, if you want to look up something uh, of that course, it's really difficult to, to, to find it again. Yeah. 
and that's why it has here the academy and the uh, um, uh, the, um, the the um, the part where you also can look up uh, the stuff. Yeah, and uh, find us on GitHub. It's a humble invitation for collaboration. I think it's it's a good thing, and we really we really would appreciate also a lot of comments there, and really would also uh, be happy if if you would uh, like to engage there. And we would also be open, uh, in a sense, to uh, at some point give it over if it's incubated there uh, to uh, Eclipse Foundation or, or Linux Foundation, wherever it may fit best. Yeah? So uh, that is also good. So you're seeing we are making progress there, uh, but that's not all. Yeah, not only publishing is is one of the of the parts there, but we also have to engage uh, with the developer. And if you uh, want to, to uh, see how we do that, um, we have um, Wolfgang here over here uh, at the FOSPEC um, talking about the Daimler TSS, which is another subsidiary with a lot of developers in there uh, about the FOS manifesto. And uh, out of the uh, open source uh, program office, um, which is called FOS COC, so Center of Competence for us, um, we, we immediately liked the idea and elevated elevated this this manifesto um, uh, to the whole Daimler world. So this is really a good thing because it, I think um, management is one thing, but also empowering the developer that it's actually allowed. You can do that. Please do it. Huh? Uh, please also before you write something, please look it up uh, in the open source world if there's already something that you can just reuse. And um, if, if, if you find something and you want to fix something, please give it back to the community because it, in the end, it's, it's really, uh, it's helping us all. Yeah? So that's kind of uh, stuff we also did. Um, and we are trying to push that through the organization, through the whole um, company and encourage uh, certainly the usage, engage in the right communities. I think now we have a good uh, contribution record in, in terms of Kubernetes uh, uh, in, in, C, in the CNCF. Uh, I think we have over uh, 30, 30 merge requests that was, um, were accepted there. And it shows you that out of this really big program, the first uh, runners really come out and, and do something in the open source world. And that really uh, is a thing that definitely makes me proud that out of this big enterprise with this kind of obstacles, we, we really didn't foresee in the beginning uh, are making to make more and more sense um, that it actually happens. Yeah? Uh, and that's one of the questions usually we get asked, uh, why does it take so long? Yeah? And I hope I could give you a little bit of insight in, in what a, a learning journey in a big company looks like and how much you have to do to really uh, be in this open source space. Yeah? And so in the end, I can only uh, tell you, may the FOSS be with you. And um, that's what I always end with, uh, my, my FOSS um, talks uh, in, in Daimler, uh, to really make uh, people understand that this is a thing which is not going to be to go away, and we really want to embrace it. And I think maybe we have a little bit time for questions. Okay, thank you very much, Jonas. Um, and yes, indeed, we have some questions. And uh, everyone, please um, add additional questions to the shared notes. So um, the first question is this. Um, the learning platform that you released on GitHub, um, I don't know if it's on GitHub or on your own uh, platform. So the learning platform that you released, do people in the community use it or contribute to it? Could you please uh, share the link here? Yeah, yeah. I, the, the, the link is just github.com slash Daimler. And then you'll find the DP learning platform. Yeah, We will have to find a new name for it because uh, that's not very inventive, actually. Um, yet um, um, it's built on WordPress. Uh, I don't think that we have any community contribution yet, and we really have to uh, also engage in this kind of um, development in the open process that we really make it happen. That is something we are currently doing, um, but I'm really, really happy that we already made it through the whole process to really open source it and uh, would really like, because that's that's a problem a lot, uh, well, other, other companies and other organizations as well have, in conveying yeah? and with COVID-19, the whole situation here also at home, 
um, and learning learning remotely has become uh, a lot more present uh, than it has in the uh, in the times before. Okay, um, and the next question: What are the next steps? What's the roadmap? Yeah, the roadmap uh, definitely is really bring it bring it to the organization. Yeah, we have the processes, we have the tools, and so on. Yeah, but now it really comes up to. Uh, enabling developers getting developers also to know that they are allowed to do it yeah? getting uh, getting uh, everybody in there that they are really also keen on doing it because in the in the beginning uh, usually for a, a developer uh, sometimes it really looks hard to do that because we have a we have a big uh, wiki uh, where uh, the process is described for instance and the developer first has to look in there and and see you know there is uh, a normative section what is the rules then there is definitely an how to section and how to really do a merge request with all the stuff uh, within within um, uh, github for instance yeah and that should help um, but um, it's a lot about advocacy at the current time yeah so really we try to um, advocate for the the stuff uh, that you can do it and then try to learn again from the developer what what went well what isn't going so well so that we have the possibility to really uh, also improve the processes because no process you start is from the beginning right perfect yeah that doesn't work this way so we really also have to listen there and, and that's uh, that's where we're currently at uh, i would say yeah we have a, a few uh, leaders in there they are doing now it's their daily work to do a uh, a merge request with Kubernetes or um, doing, for instance, uh, uh, working in the open on their own open source project. Um, but that's that's uh, only a few, only a fraction, a small fraction of the people we actually have working with software. And we really want to enable everybody. And that just takes some time. Yeah? Wow, everybody, that's... Uh, um... <laughs> Big goal. Um, so the next question here, do you have any coding programs that students can participate in? And that's uh, Roman asking. Um, yeah, um, I, I put this kind of item on a slide and um, it's, um, it's on our roadmap at some point. Um, the question is when, yeah? So um, if you would like to engage, that's, that's definitely something um, we would like, um, and if, uh, yeah, um, we don't have a structured program yet, but we, we are thinking about it and how to build it up. Yeah? But we, for instance, we, we joined the, the GitHub um, sponsoring program, and I think we are one of those, uh, um, um, yeah, uh, first uh, who, who made it possible from the from a company side and made it into announcement with, with Nat. Yeah? That's cool. Yeah, um, and uh, that it's not not structured. Yeah, so that's essentially giving out um, money to developers in in areas where we think it makes sense for us. Yeah, but uh, for students, so I, it, as I said, it's on the roadmap. We don't have it yet. If you are happy to do it, then just drop me some some email. So. I think that's maybe an overlap uh, um, that we could also join up. Um, I don't know what you're exactly doing with GitHub, but I know that we are talking with GitHub all the times because they are asking us how to do developer programs. Um, and they're running one in the US and they, the next one will be uh, now in India. And uh, so it seems to me a bit uh, that we could also like maybe uh, collaborate directly with each mm -hmm. other. So we would definitely be interested in, and uh, um, yeah, we have the Code Heat program. So everyone, anyone who's watching, um, Code Heat program this year runs still until 2000, uh, um, yeah, uh, sorry, until the month of June. <laughs> so I hope it's okay to make a bit of advertising here in your session for that. Absolutely, um, absolutely. Yeah, we want everybody to engage. Yeah? Okay, great. And uh, so then uh, maybe I also jump quickly to question number five, because the question here is related. How can developers in Asia join your projects? Do you have any contacts in Asia? Um, I, yeah, we do have contacts in Asia. We have a, a big uh, company in China, actually. We have also uh, in Japan, but there's less of development. I think China is a little bit bigger in, in terms of development also. Uh, people in Malaysia, um, 
uh, and so on. Yeah, so maybe there's there's something I, I could uh, could find that out. I don't have this with me uh, currently, uh, but the best um, place to really engage with the open source projects we have is our current uh, GitHub page, github slash github.com slash Daimler, which we try to to really bring all the the the, the uh, even subsidiaries um, that we have uh, within the Daimler group together on, on one central point. Yeah? So um, some of the things there might be even out of Asia. Uh, so that might be a, a, a good way to start. And uh, if, if there's not, maybe you can contact me. So we don't have time anymore. There are more questions uh, coming up. And uh, one question is, for example, can you share a bit about the open source release process at Daimler? I think that would be an entire session, probably, uh, <laughs> to discuss this topic. But I don't know if you have any resources or links that you could share here on the shared notes. Um, and uh, yeah, we're looking forward to stay engaged and maybe have uh, future sessions uh, on the topic that was just um, here um, mentioned by Stephanie Wong. So, Jonas, it's always a pleasure to welcome here, uh, welcome you at our events and good to see you again. And it's really exciting to see the next steps um, of Daimler that you took, like uh, your first engagement with, for example, the Force Asia community was great. And uh, um, yeah, we see things are coming out of it um, activities are coming out of it and you continue to work um, in the free and open source software community maybe even hardware, I don't know. Hardware was a big topic here at the summit. So <laughs> definitely we're looking forward to hear uh, about uh, your steps here uh, next and in the future. Thank you very much for joining us. It was a pleasure. Thank you, always a pleasure to be here. And it's, it's super familiar to be here in, in Asia, even virtually, I, I really had a little bit the feeling I'm being in Singapore. So that's really great. And uh, I hope you have a good day. And my commitment, you can see, uh, by looking at the time. So it's seven o'clock in the morning in Germany and Saturdays. Yeah, that would be something which usually would uh, uh, yield an index out of bounds uh, um, uh, exception with my clock. Yeah. yeah. And Hofuk <laughs> just came into the broadcasting room here and uh, wanted to say hello. <laughs> yes. Hi. Uh, dear Mr. Uh, Von Malotke, uh, I want to ask you if you can say a few Japanese words to our uh, Japanese viewer. Yeah. おはようございます。ドイツからヨナスモロフキと申します。皆さんよろしくお願いします。パーフェクト。Thank you. <laughs> 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 <laughs>